Okay, I am so sorry for trashing my presentation slides, just to let you see. I actually have this talk over there, but I only realized this after coming here, so I'm sorry about it. Uh, so what I did was to come up with a, as much of a replica of my talk as possible. Uh, but before I begin, I kind of got to know that this is the mascot for Talk CSS. So yeah. Please take a picture of them when you're done. <laughs> okay, so my topic today is a very nerdy topic. So it's about accessibility, especially in terms of styling and how we are going to do a, uh, work on it. The topic is on focus, as in the focus style. So when I check, uh, I had this thought about focus the other day, right? And then when I tried to search on the internet about focus, like how do people actually style focus, right? This is what I, 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 I see in almost all the articles. Just use the default focus. And then everyone is just exclaiming and shouting at it. And please just use the default focus. And then I'm, I'm like, really? Really? Um, I'm pretty sure there are some problems with the default focus and it's probably not the best. If we put in some work, we can probably do something slightly better. So let me say the problems with the default focuses. Right. So I went around and you know, checked the default focus states for the major browsers, Safari, Firefox, Chrome. Safari has this like, you know, solid border, Firefox has this dotted border, and then Chrome has this blurred border. It's expanded so it doesn't look so blurry at this point. Then my first problem with this is, on Firefox, uh, it's really hard to see the border when it's... You can, you can try. It's really hard to see this dotted border if you put it on a white background. So then, Point number one, accessibility problem right from the scratch. Who says default focus? I want to. Okay. <laughs> then for the second pet peeve uh, is Chrome. If it's, it's blurry. If you want me to focus on something, why do you want me to focus on something that is blurry? Doesn't make sense to me. So this one is another pet peeve for me. Nah. The third one is if you want some brand identity or brand, um, what's that word called? Can't find a word. Uh. Like, Everything should be the same, right? If you want your brand to be on point. So like, is it so hard to get the focus right across browsers? So that's my three pet peeves, uh, the three problems. Um, so I was thinking, if this is so hard, if the Firefox one was so hard to read on the, uh, to see on a white background, what happens if we show it on a dark background? Will it be different? So I tried the dark background. Okay, so Fire, Safari is still blue, Chrome is still blue. Firefox did a white color dotted border, and this is a lot easier to see compared to the other two. So there's an accessibility plus for Firefox in this case, right? Then, if this is still blue and this is still blue, what if you put it on a blue background? <laughs> <laughs> so accessi accessibility problem enhanced. So. Should we use the default focus? And then back in my, my house, right, I'm a bit uncivilized when I'm back at home, so sorry about it. I go like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there should be better ways of doing it, but I was like, like I said, I was searching the internet and then I couldn't find any articles that talked about the design of a focus style properly. So what I did was to you know, go and Google different sites that I normally use and see what they use. So first one I do is CSS tricks. So CSS tricks mostly use the, the normal focus, the default one. This is on Chrome. Um, it looks quite okay, especially, but I think it looks very okay because they change the colors of the text at the same time. So it's very brand on point in this case. For the lower part, this is a little bit harder to see because it's a dark background. So that is a little bit of a problem. Um, the button also, you can't really notice if you tap on it. Especially if you're a keyboard user, right? if you tap, 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 you don't know where the focus go. You want something to be very eye-popping. Right? Then, so 
I tried almost all the things and then this one popped up. Why? Because there's a change in the color and the border at the same time. So it's not especially just the focus ring itself, but other things can also help. So this is one thing that I learned. Then I went to Smashing Mac. Smashing Mac uses a very Firefox-ish style, but slightly bigger at 3 pixels. So their dotted lines is much easier to see. So that's very nice. I kind of like it. Uh, what I especially like about Smashing Mac is how this, th this worked. So the black dotted line, slightly blackish, more maroonish color, plus the change in color makes, it, makes the changes very obvious. So this is what I liked. But there's one part where I found it's not very helpful. Um, I'm not sure if you can notice this. Can you see that? Can you see the button got highlighted? So that's the that's the thing. Like if you use a very dark uh, if you use a dark outline or on a button, right? You want to make the changes a bit more obvious. So just color alone is probably not enough. Color plus outline, and the outline is not very contrasting with the background. So we can we can do something better in this case. Then next, I went to Twitter because we are all on Twitter, right? Then Twitter uses the default one most of the time. But there are a few places that are very nice, like this one, this one, this one, and this one, this one also. Right? So like, you can see that if you put in the effort to make the small little things, you can actually make the experience a lot nicer compared to just use the default. Okay, if you go into the sidebar on Twitter, right, it's also quite nice. Like, it's very obvious that we are focusing on something, except for this one. Uh. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you use the same thing, and then there's not enough contrast there already, because blue and blue. So this is something we have to take note of also. Then I, I like Slack's one the most. Very obvious. Right? And the, it's especially the blue outline plus that outer focus ring thing, it's, it draws the attention inwards. And it's focused in that point. So this is very nice. And they did it on the darker shade also. So if you go to the sidebar, they actually made it off like, what's this color? Purple and slightly transparent. So this, I, I, I like this one. Then um, Chris Coyer introduced me to this thing called what? WTF forms. And this is how they style a, uh, I think this is a checkbox. Yeah, this is a checkbox. So notice it's a white color border, then a blue color border. So this is the, the focus style. It's also quite nice. Especially like the, I especially like the slack one and this one. And I just went back on my own side, right? I noticed that this part is also, it, it draws your attention because of the animating lines from the top to bottom. So what I learned about this whole experience, looking at focus styles and all that stuff is, there are four things we should take note of. The first thing is, we, as much as possible, want to add an outline to it. So, bam. If you add an outline to something, and so, like something that has no outline, and then you have an outline, it's very obvious. The second thing you can do is to add animations, because animations draw the eye. The third thing you can do is to change the background color. So like a change in background color also draws the eye, but you usually have to follow that with a change in color as well. And the fourth thing you can do is simply change color. Yay, happy birthday. <laughs> yeah. But when you change the color, make sure you do some other additional changes in addition to the color, otherwise it's not um, eye popping enough. Then next, next, I want to talk about how to code the different focus styles that I showed you just now. So I'm going to this one. This is the Smashing Mac focus style. All right. The easy, uh, it's quite easy because what you need to do is just to say, you can see it now. Uh? Zoom. Hey, what's the zoom not working? Zoom, zoom, zoom. Okay. Yeah, what you need to do is actually just set 
outline three pixels dotted, and then you will be able to see the dotted outline. Then it's not very hard to make it accessible on a or very obvious on a white background, you know, like kind of like how Firefox does it. We just invert the color on the red background or something. And if you use CSS variables, you can say, this is the normal outline color on most backgrounds, and on the red background, change it to white. Simple as that. Then it makes it very, very easy to toggle the focus colors and allow, it, allow your whole theming to become a bit easier. Then there's the WTF forms one. Yeah. So the WTF forms one, there's, uh, it uses box shadow to create the first outer white color ring, then another box shadow to create the blue color ring. So it kind of looks like this. See the ring? Quite nice. And then, like I said, if you use CSS variables, you can always invert the colors by changing the colors like, just like that. And you go, ding. Then Slack one is quite similar, except the outer color, you do, you do a bigger number. You can also choose to have some sort of, uh, you can also choose to have opacity so it fades out, like what uh, Slack actually does. But I didn't, did I go and, yeah, I actually did the opacity one on the dark one. So, eh, that's the opacity. Yeah, so, it's quite easy to make the focus style if you think about it this way. And then I group together everything again. We check the default, this is the default. The smashing one, the WTF forms one, and select one. All the other three looks better than the default, right? At least to me, yeah. And this is the default one on the darker one. Then the smashing one, that one, select. It's a lot more, it's, it catches your attention if you just put in a little bit more effort into putting, styling the focus right. Yeah. So with that, right, um, let's go talk about, oh, this one I'm done. Let's talk about this, this my, my pet peeve recently, like, who here style all three the same? <laughs> I do. But they should be different because hover is hover, focus is focus, and active is active, right? Um, our main problem is not about focus and hover because those are different input methods, so that's fine. Our main problem is usually active because we don't really know what to do with it and we just plonk it together and then we call it a day. But, you know, there's this very fun thing with pressing buttons, right, you know? Yeah, so, so what happens if you, you, can, you can actually do this very simply without a lot of styles. Let's go into it. You show the hover state. When you click, you show the focus state. So at this point, if you do a mouse one, you, you show both states at the same time. And then if you, do, if you come to this element on the keyboard, you can fo show the focus state first. And then when you interact with it, in this case, it will be space on a button element you show the focused uh, state at the same time. How to do that is something like this. Ah, command problem. Okay. Element, um, you style the hover and active at the same time, and then you do focus for showing outline. So that's the, the trick to that, that, that easy way out thing. I call it the, the magic focus styling thing. But there is a problem with using this. If you want to use this, you have to know of this weird ass bug on um, Firefox and Safari on a Mac. Hey, so what happens is you need to add this code into the at the top of your JavaScript file. Why? Because there is this one case where you if you click a button, the button doesn't get focused. The body gets focused instead. So this is what I researched and found out. This is on Firefox on Mac. And we're like, why Firefox? And I wrote about this on this article, so you can go and Google if you want to. I shall not waste your time on this one. 
But long story short, Safari focuses on the body elements, Firefox focuses on the body element, on Mac only, and then Firefox on Windows focuses on the focus uh, on the button, but doesn't show the focus glow for some weird reason. Edge also doesn't show the focus glow for some weird reason, and Chrome seems to be the only one that does it consistently. And I kind of think the Chrome's way of doing things is, especially for this case, is the better one. So, which is why I recommend using this. This causes, uh, when you click on a button, it focuses on the button itself. So it creates that intentional focus on the button and allows the, and, and, and it kind of overrides the problems here. So that is what the code is for. And of course, if you are a little bit more hardworking, you can always style all three things differently and you get something like this. Much better than, you know, just without the... Boom. Okay. Ken, and with that, that comes to the end of what I want to share today. Thank you very much.